गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर श्वेता सीनियर रेजिडेंट फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हेप्टोलॉजी पी जे चंडीगढ़ आई एम हेयर टू प्रेजेंट माई स्टडी एन टाइटल रिफेक्सिम एंड इम्प्रूव फ्रेल्टी इन पेशेंट्स विद डिकम्पनसेटेड सिरोसिस ए रेंडमाइज क्लिनिकल ट्रायल इज नो फाइनेंशियल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट डिकम्पनसेटेड सिरोसिस पेशेंट्स हैव ए हाई प्रेवलेंस ऑफ फ्रेल्टी दैट इंक्रीज इज मॉर्बिडिटी एंड मॉर्टेलिटी एंड फिजिकल फ्रेल्टी इन सिरोसिस इज ए सिग्निफिकेंट प्रिडिक्टर ऑफ मॉर्टेलिटी हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन एंड एडवर्स आउटकम्स pathogenesis of frailty is multifactorial which includes nutritional deficiencies systemic endotoxemia gut dysbiosis and state of chronic inflammation at present only nutritional supplementation is a primary strategy for addressing loss of muscle mass in cirrhosis however nutritional intervention alone often falls short of improving frailty outcomes in cirrhotic patients So despite the promising potential of rifaximin no previous studies had specifically evaluated its effect on frailty in uh, cirrhosis so rifaximin's role for hepatic encephalopathy is well established in the literature however recent studies suggest that rifaximin uh, may act as disease modifying agent by acting beyond hepatic encephalopathy in cirrhosis so gala reef study which showed rifaximin impro- uh, leading to improvement in liver fibrosis in alcohol related liver fibrosis second uh, rct that rifsis trial also showed improvement in gut dysbiosis and reduces oralization of gut bacteria third is the animal study which uh, showed the beneficial effect of rifaximin on skeletal muscles so basically all these studies pointed towards the role of rifaximin in improving gut dis- gut dysbiosis and systemic en- endotoxemia So our hypothesis was that improvement in gut dysbiosis and systemic endotoxemia with rifaximin in patients of decompensated cirrhosis can benefit frailty through various pathways of the frailty. Aim of our study was to determine the impact of a six-month rifaximin therapy along with standard medical treatment on frailty in decompensated cirrhosis patients. We did a single-center, open-label, randomized clinical uh, control trial. We included patients with decompensated cirrhosis. Uh, with age of 18 to 75 and uh, who had frailty on assessment exclusion criteria include patients with acute on chronic liver failure history of hepatic encephalopathy history of alcohol intake or al- alcohol associated hepatitis any active malignancy and others based on our previous study we assumed the mean lfi in patients with cirrhosis 2v3.98 the sample size was calculated to detect a minimal clinically significant difference of at least 0.5 So, uh, to achieve a power of 80 percent, the study required 46 patients uh, per group. And after adjusting for anticipated dropout rate of 10 percent, we enrolled 50 patients in each arm. So, frailty assessment was done by the Liver Frailty Index criteria using frail calculator available online, which includes three components as shown here: dominant hand grip strength, time to do five chair stands, and the second holding three, three position balance. And patients were categorized into uh, uh, three categories: frail, pre-frail, and robust, based on the LFI score. So at baseline, uh, demographics, lab investigation, and anthrom- anthropometric measurements were noted, and patients were allocated in two study arms, uh, intervention arm and the control arm, in one is to one ratio using computer-generated random numbers. RSMT group u- include use of rifaximin along with standard medical care for decompensated cirrhosis patient, and SMT group uh, group include use uh, standard medical care for uh, cirrhotic patients, and patients were followed weekly. For first month, then monthly till six month. Results: We assessed 250 patients for eligibility, out of which 150 were excluded for various reasons. Under were randomized one is to one group, group A and group B. Group A in, uh, included rifaximin with, with SMT, and group B included uh, SMT alone, and they were followed uh, for next six months. All baseline characteristics of the study population, uh, including age, gender, comorbidities, and etiology of cirrhosis, were comparable at baseline. And most common etiology in our study, uh, most common etiology of cirrhosis in our study was uh, alcohol, followed by mesalty and hepatitis C. CTP score was eight uh, versus eight point two. Male score was twelve versus thirteen, and LFI was four point seven in both the groups at uh, baseline. Our primary objective was a change in frailty at six months. There was significant improvement in LFI in RSMT group uh, from 4.7 to 4.2 however no significant change was noted in the SMT group delta change in LFI was also significantly higher in RSMT that a delta change was uh, 0.5 versus 0.06 uh, similarly hand grip strength also improved in RSMT group in both male uh, and mo- in both male and female 
both five chair stands and balance time also showed improving trend in the in our SMT group. However, it was not statistically significant as compared to SMT. On Cox regression analysis, we found that enrollment in the intervention arm, younger age of the patient, and lower levels of IL-6 at baseline were the predictors of frailty improvement at uh, six months. Secondary outcomes prognostic scores, there was significant improvement in CTP score in our SMT group as compared to the SMT, and similar uh, trend of improvement in MELT score was also noted in our SMT group as compared to the SMT group. Uh, Second, uh, second, uh, second outcome that inflammatory markers at six months, all baseline, uh, all inflammatory markers, including ESR, CRP, and IL-6, reduced in both the groups. However, delta change in specifically in IL-6 was significantly higher uh, in the RSMT group as compared to the SMT, that was N versus 5. There was significant reduction in the uh, hospitalization rate uh, in RSMT group, 16 versus 52 percent, which a significant reduction in the frequency of hospitalization. All causes of hospitalization uh, showed reduced, uh, uh, there was a reduced incidence of hepatic encephalopathy, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, acute variceal bleed, and acute kidney injury in our SMT group as compared to the SMT. So on univariate analysis, we found in, uh, inclusion in the control arm, higher meld at baseline, higher levels of IL-6, and frailty at baseline were associated with hospitalization. However, on multivariate analysis, in, uh, inclusion in the control arm, uh, higher levels of IL-6 and frailty were the predictors of hospitalization. Overall survival was 84 percent in our study. Around 90 percent, 90 percent patients survived in our SMT versus 78 percent in SMT. However, this difference was not statistically significant. So concluding our study, this study shows that six months of rifaximine in patients with decompensated cirrhosis patients improves frailty, reduces the severity of liver disease, and reduces hospitalization rate with significant reduction in the incidence of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, hepatic encephalopathy, acute variceal bleed, and acute kidney injury. So benefits are likely mediated through effects on systemic inflammation and gut microbiota. However, further large multicentric studies are needed to confirm these findings and explore the potential role of rifaximin as disease modifying agent in cirrhosis. So acknowledging and special thanks to my chief guide, Dr. Sunil Taneja, and our, my co-guide and our head of the department, Dr. Ajay Duseja, and our all faculty member and my colleagues. Thank you. I have two questions for you. Uh, one is half your patients were alcoholic uh, related. See, I didn't see data on subsequent use of alcohol in the six months of your trial. I would like to know about that. And second is, the, there was significant reduction in spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and hepatic yes. encephalopathy. Yes. So was there any effect of rifaximin independent of those two factors? Uh, independent of? Spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and hepatic encephalopathy, because that is a clear indication for rifaximin. Uh, sir, we enrolled all patients at baseline who had no hepatic encephalopathy at baseline or no history of uh, hepatic encephalopathy. On follow-up, these patients are at re on risk of hepatic encephalopathy. On follow-up, there was significant less number of uh, patients who developed hepatic encephalopathy. Was, did you look at, I mean, maybe your numbers are too small, but is there an effect independent of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and hepatic encephalopathy, independent of? Uh, sir, independent of both these, we, uh, we are looking at implementing the inflammatory markers also and uh, other there is significant improvement in uh, other parameters. Uh, was this past history of uh, encephalopathic episodes was equal in both the groups? Because you've shown that there's significant reduction in the treatment group. The past history is also very important sir, in sir, this. Sir, at baseline, we included only those patients who had no history of hepatic encephalopathy in the past. Microphone so we excluded four. those patients. <coughs> Microphone four. Yes, hi. Dr. Shweta, I have a question for you. For the standard medical nutrition therapy, have you used any nutrition parameters like what was their protein intake or energy intake ne before and after? You, uh, salt restriction and high protein diet that we advise for all patients of decompensated cirrhosis. So no, otherwise, no special instructions were given. Microphone no. one. Okay. 
mean calorie data no that was not calculated no microphone two uh, is it rifaximin specific or any other antibiotic would have done the same job so one recent study that is the rifamycin uh, based that to rivet rct by the bajaj et al uh, also shows almost similar results of microphone 3 no uh, let but me complete sorry doctor uh, quickly we have very limited time microphone 3 so, uh, what was the dose of rifaximin has there so was 550 no 550 bd yeah because there was no previous history of he so how do you decide on the dose like how do you, why do you pick up 550 because there is no previous history so the previous okay. studies are done on uh, prophylaxis so SVP also they also have given the same dose of rifaximin so um, most of the studies done in decom cirrhosis okay. patients use the dose of rifaximin okay say to you complete uh, yeah uh, did you add lactulose to these people uh, lact yes all patients were on lactulose do they be counterproductive okay so now uh, one question basic your hypothesis was that there is gut dysbiosis and rifaximin will correct dysbiosis and therefore the LFI will improve. Yes, I sir. see no data of gut dysbiosis, change by rifaximin and the modulation to sarcopenia improvement. Sir, previous data is not No, 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 this study, yes, <coughs> this study, where is the reversal of gut dysbiosis? That is the limitation of our study. We have not looked for that. Second is you are hospitalized. 26% 26, 26 out of 50 were hospitalized patients. Do you think there is a difference in hospital diet vis-a-vis -vis home diet? These people were followed for six months and half of them were hospitalized patients. Mr. Uh, all patients were OPD on follow-up these patients, uh, this number of patients hospitalized. So there was... They, no, none of them was hospitalized? No. All, all right. So your hypothesis all. needs to be confirmed that dysbiosis and sarcopenia. Okay. Thank you.